I'm Mark. Great to have you again at our conference, our tax expert. <laughs> Thanks, it's great to be here. So, could you tell us a little bit um, what are the tax benefits of investing in a, a qualified opportunity fund? Yeah, there are two sets of benefits. They're both contained in the same statute, but they're really separate and distinct, and they should be thought of separately. First, someone who wants to make a qualified opportunity fund investment must have recognized capital gains. Ordinary income is not sufficient. You can make an investment into a qualified opportunity fund equal to the amount of capital gains that you've recognized during the 180-day period before the investment is actually made. Once the investment is made, you can defer tax on those capital gains through the end of 2026. Plus, if you hold the investment open for five years, 10% of the tax is forgiven. And if you hold it open for seven years, another 5% is forgiven. And in both cases, that's subject to the 2026 end date. So if you make the investment in 2020, there's no way to satisfy the holding period for the second 5%, but you'll get the 10% the capital gain reduction. Okay, so how are qualified opportunity funds taxed? Qualified opportunity funds are eligible for very special mm -hmm. taxation. While the income earned during the life of the fund will be taxed in the same way as any other investment, so if it's a real estate deal, you'll be taxable on the rents, uh, three things happen that are pretty exciting. First, after the investment has been open for five years, an investor gets to step up his basis in the investment by 10%. Second, after the investment's been held open for seven years, the investor gets to step up his basis in the investment by another 5%. So if the investment were to be disposed of after that time, only 85% of the gain would be subject to tax. Plus, and I think most exciting of all, is that the Qualified Opportunity Fund investment is held open for at least 10 years, all disposition gains will be tax exempt. Those gains can be recognized either by a sale of the interest in the Qualified Opportunity Fund itself, or if the Qualified Opportunity Fund holds an interest in a lower tier entity, the lower tier entity can be sold. Under the rules as currently written, however, a sale of the underlying property would not be eligible for these wonderful tax benefits. So how does a Qualified Opportunity Fund choose where to invest? The Internal Revenue Service has released a list of over 300 pages of census tracts in which qualified opportunity zone investments can be made. And so provided that the investment is made in one of those census tracts, the project will qualify for benefits. Mm -hmm. Then can I make a um, qualified opportunity fund investment before I identify where I want to invest? Yes, you can. The way that the statute is set up, the statute offers uh, waiting periods during which the fund won't be disqualified even if it's fully invested in cash. Specifically, at the top tier level or the Qualified Opportunity Fund, in cash infusions made be within six months of the first testing date are not counted against compliance. So if you were to make an investment in a Qualified Opportunity Fund before the end of 2019, you would have until June 30th, 2020 to find a deal to invest in. Plus, even if the, uh, a, a no deal has been found by that time, if you utilize a two-tier structure, and the Qualified Opportunity Fund invests in a lower tier entity referred to as a Qualified Opportunity Business, then you have an up, and up until 30 months to make the investment. So there's lots of leeway for making investments today with respect to uh, money that hasn't found a home yet. I see. So that's a Qualified Opportunity Fund have to really uh, invest in real estate? No, not, it's not necessarily so. Although many of the offerings that are out there today mm -hmm. are in the real estate yes. space, mm -hmm. uh, there are operating businesses which qualify as well. And the operating business need not wholly take place within the opportunity zone to qualify. Uh, there's a requirement that it, over 70% of the uh, tangible personal property used in the business be uh, used in the opportunity zone, but only 50% of the profits from the business need to be generated from the opportunity zone. Plus, certain types of businesses can perform their services anywhere that provided that they're headquartered and the equipment is stored in the opportunity zone, uh, the business will qualify in home. Thank you very much, Mark. Very insightful. Oh, and you have participated in our conference for um, several times. Um, would you mind sharing with us um, 
some of your feedback or maybe your um, your impressions about our conference. Yeah, the barrel elite conferences tend to really generate um, interest among industry leaders and among investors. Uh, the topics that get chosen um, are really holistic in that they cover uh, legal, investment, risk management, and uh, the attendees, I think, come away with a lot from each of these conferences. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alva. <laughs>